So looking at question one, we've got an object we can assume is being dropped on the moon uh, and we've been asked to create a velocity time graph. What can we say about the motion of that object or the velocity of that object? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? It's speeding up. It's speeding up. So it's increasing by a consistent amount or is the amount changing? Consistent. Consistent amount through the entire duration. So what do we expect to see when we draw a velocity time graph? Straight line, positive gradient, correct? Cool. So, obviously, I've got my graph here, and it's probably a good time to remind us all about some of our graphing skills. So, what have I not done that I should have done? Title. Title, very good. So, I should have velocity, time graph, and if you had a description of the object, what it was and where it was, you might want to write that up there, but I'm just happy with velocity, time graph. What else do I need? What have I not done? I've got my units, which is good. I've got my titles, I've got my units. Hmm? Should I have used an object? The straight edge. Ruler, clearly I haven't used a ruler there, correct? Which means my intervals aren't appropriately spaced. If that is not done, you won't find a straight line. Or your dots won't perfectly sit on a straight line, which is a problem. Cool? I expect that mine won't because I'm freehanding everything. I'm going to go up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't need to. I could go up in 1.5. I could go up in 1.6 as if I wanted. Okay. As long as I'm going up by the same amount each time, I'm all good. Same as the time. Cool. So as long as you're going up by the same amount each interval, you're all sweet. So at one second, I expect to see a dot somewhere around here. Two, three point two, three. Up here for 6.4. Cool. What are those dots? Yep. Connect them with a line. Okay, very good. I don't do a line of best fit with this graph. Why not? Yeah, it is linear. Do I know what happens between 0 and 1 seconds on my data? Do I know what's happening? Do I? Definitively? You don't definitively know. You've got a pretty good idea but you don't definitively know. So what we're assuming is that these collections are perfect. Now, this, like I said, is not going to be straight. And you'd be connecting those with straight lines. What should I see, though, realistically? What should I see in this scenario? A dead straight line between 0 to 6.4. Sweet. Who got that? Very, very good. So that's creating the graph not the most challenging component of this. What's the challenging component? Um, finding the gradient. Finding the gradient. Why do we need to find the gradient? You're right, we need to find the gradient. Why though? So yep. We can work out so we can work out acceleration because question two says create an acceleration time graph. Now because the gradient or because the values of this linear graph don't change between zero to four seconds, do they change at all? It's going up by the same amount every time, isn't it? I can pick any two points. So give me two points to pick. 6.4 .4 and 4. What do you want that to be? 0.2 or 0.1? 0.2. And Nathan? 1.6. And we'll make that 0.1. So into my equation I would shove M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1. You may use rise over run. Why do I not recommend using rise over run? It's as accurate providing you know what you're doing. Is it got anything to do with how linear the line is? Or? What happens if you get a negative gradient? It doesn't rise. So providing you're good enough to see when you've got a negative gradient, the rise is negative, use rise over run. If you know that that's a sticky point, and I see plenty of kids make that mistake, do you think I see kids make a mistake with this one? No. The only mistake you can possibly make is if you don't assign the correct y2 and x2 value. So if you make it y2 and x1, you're going to get yourself into problems. Cool? y2 is 6.4 minus y1, 1.6 over 4 minus uh, 1, which equals, yeah, you're one step in front, which will equal 4.8 over 3, which equals 1.6 meters per second squared. 
So my acceleration graph, I'm not going to redraw my graph because I'm extraordinarily lazy. What I'm going to do is rub out that <laughs> and make this acceleration change my units to metres per second squared. I'm going to rub that word out and write acceleration. And this is where you do as I say, not as I do. And then I'm going to draw a straight line across there. Very good. Sweet? Yes. I'm going to rub that out in about one second. Why am I going to do that? I didn't make a new graph, and why, did I not, why do I want to rub that graph out, not my velocity graph out? Logan. I need to use my velocity to find my displacement graph, don't I? Okay. So have we got, everyone got that? That something looks like that with your acceleration time graph? Yes. Good. It's gone. Back to velocity. Going to get rid of those circles. I don't need them. Because we're now doing our displacement time graph. Now, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to remind us how do we find displacement from a velocity time graph. Three seconds to think. Three seconds to think. How is that? We find the area. Now, what I'm going to do, because I don't like to, again, double down on work, I'm going to write a third row on my column, and I'm going to make an assumption here. What's the assumption I'm going to make? It starts at zero. Do I know that's the case? That's an assumption, probably a very good thing to think about with your math assignment, for example. If I didn't make that assumption, could I solve this problem? No, there is no way to solve it. How would I deal with the that assumption not being correct? If it starts at 10 metres, what would I do? Would I just add 10 to all my values and it would all be good? Cool? Very good. So I'll show you the first one, and then I'll leave you to it. What's that shape? Triangle. Oh, triangle. Very good. So, what's the height? 1.6. Can you tell my year 12s that? Well, they sit their exam. It'll be good. Trapezoidal rule. What's the width? What's the area equation for a triangle? That's Pythagoras. I'm glad that you're onto that. That's, that's a valuable triangle equation. Area equals base times height over 2. My base is? My height is? Divide that by 2. So my first time is 0 0.8. Very good. Now after 2 seconds I can do 2 things. I can either add my second shape here. So I could do a second line here, up to 3.2, and I could break this into two shapes. What shape have I got there? Triangle and a rectangle. I could do that. That seems pretty arduous though with work. Or I could just do a big triangle. I'll leave it up to you. Cool. Get going.